Hi, this is Dr. John Bergduff. In this video, we're going to talk about a property called the density of the rational numbers. Now, the way that this is stated in theoretical mathematics is that the rational numbers are dense in themselves. Now, that probably doesn't really communicate very much at all. What does that mean? The simple way to state that is very, very simple. Uh, in other words, between any two rational numbers, you can always find another rational number. So if I am asked to find a rational number, between let's say uh, four sevenths and five sevenths what the density theorem says is that there will be one that there is a rational number somewhere between four sevenths and five sevenths and when you look at that, you think, well, how can that be? Four sevenths and five sevenths, there's nothing in between them at all. But you, there is a very simple way to illustrate that there's one in there. The fundamental theorem of fractions says that if you multiply both the numerator and the denominator of the fraction by the same non-zero digit, you create an equivalent fraction. Why did I choose two? Completely arbitrary. I just picked a uh, easy to work with number that tells me that four sevenths would be the same as eight fourteenths. Five sevenths, if I multiply numerator and denominator by two there, would give me 10 fourteenths. And when you realize that these two fractions are equivalent to the ones that we started with, then you can see, oh, well, pretty obvious what a, a rational number is between those. Between 8 fourteenths and 9 fourteenths would be the fraction, or excuse me, between 8 fourteenths and 10 fourteenths would be the fraction 9 fourteenths. I did not have to multiply by 2. I could have multiplied by 3 just as well, or any other number that I feel like. If I multiply 4 sevenths, numerator and denominator by 3 that would give me 12 21st 5 7 multiply top and bottom numerator and denominator by 3 would give me 15 21st Looking for a rational number between those, mm, I could choose 14 over 21, maybe. And then I might realize, oh, 14 is 2 times 7, and 21 is 3 times 7, so that particular fraction would reduce. And that would tell me that another example of a rational number between 4 sevenths and five-sevenths would be two-thirds. That's kind of unexpected. Here's one more example. Let's suppose our fractions don't have the same denominator, so I've got to work harder. And in fact, let's see that even make them negative, just so we're dealing with rational numbers that are not always positive. I'm looking for a rational number between negative three-fourths and negative seven-eighths. Before I can do a trick similar to what I did before, I really have to have these guys having this, the, a common denominator. A uh, common denominator here would be 8. So before I do the trick I showed you a minute ago, I have to first rewrite the first of those fractions so that I can see a common denominator. This is negative 6 eighths. And I'm comparing that still with negative 7 eighths. Again, since the numerators are adjacent integers, it doesn't look like at first that there might be something. But multiply numerator and denominator by, say, 2 or whatever else your favorite number might be. And 
and negative 6 over 2 becomes negative 12, excuse me, negative 6 over 8 becomes negative 12 sixteenths, and negative 7 times 2, that's negative 14 sixteenths, and I'm looking for something that would go in between those. Hmm, how about negative 13 sixteenths? And that's an easy way to show that indeed the rational numbers are dense in themselves. Between any two rational numbers, you can always find another one.